Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome all the students. And now we are going to talk about the second colligative property, which is the elevation of boiling point, or you may also call it as. Abelioscopy. Elevation of boiling point is defined as the increase in the boiling point of solvent after solution formation because of the addition of the non-volatile and non-electrolyte solute in it. So when the solvent is pure, it has lower boiling point. But when you mix a non-volatile, non-electrolyte solute in the solvent, its boiling point is increased in the form of the solution, and this increase in the boiling point is called as the elevation of boiling point. Now, why the boiling point of the solvent actually increases? Suppose that this one is the pure solvent. Its vapor pressure is shown with the symbol P naught, and in this pure solvent, you mix some non-volatile, non-electrolyte solute, and it is changed to the solution form. And now its vapor pressure is P, and you know that P naught is always greater than P. Means the vapor pressure of the pure solvent is always greater than the vapor pressure of the solvent in the form of solution, or you may say vapor pressure of the solution simply. At the P naught minus P, that is called as delta P, and this is actually the lowering of the vapor pressure. And vapor pressure of the pure solvent is greater, so its boiling point will be lesser. But when you will mix some non-volatile, non-electrolyte solute in it, non-volatile. non electrolyte solute now it is not a pure solvent rather it is changed to the form of the solution and because of this presence of non volatile non electrolyte solute the escaping tendency of the solvent molecules decreases due to which the vapor pressure also decreases and when the vapor pressure is decreased you know that vapor pressure is inversely related to the boiling point so as you observe the decrease in the vapor pressure that results in the corresponding increase in the boiling point of the solvent in the form of the solution or boiling point of the solution so pure solvent has high vapor pressure low boiling point but when non volatile non electrolyte solute is added in it and it is converted to the solution form then the escaping tendency of the solvent molecules decreases in this solution form due to which its vapor pressure decreases and there is corresponding increase in the boiling point and this difference of the boiling point of the solution and that of the pure solvent it is called as the elevation of boiling point or it is termed as the abelioscopy now <clears throat> let us discuss it graphically if we draw a graph by taking temperature on x axis and vapor pressure on y axis now this one is the point of the external pressure this line shows the external pressure when you have pure solvent then you know that vapor pressure and temperature they are directly related so a rising curve is obtained this is shown with the a b curve this is a b curve and when you will increase the temperature of the pure solvent its vapor pressure will also keep on increasing and the point b reaches where the vapor pressure of the pure solvent becomes equal to the external pressure and when the vapor pressure of pure solvent becomes equal to the external pressure then this corresponding temperature is called as t1 T1 is the boiling point of the pure solvent. So this was the case of the pure solvent. 
Now you add the non-volatile non-electrolyte solute. Any non-volatile non-electrolyte solute can be used. Then you will form solution. And when the vapor pressure of this solution will be plotted against its temperature, again a rising curve will be obtained and you will show this rising curve with CD which will show that when you increase the temperature the boiling point of solution also sorry when you increase the temperature vapor pressure of solution also increases and then a point D reaches where this curve meets the external pressure and the vapor pressure of the solution becomes equal to external pressure and the temperature corresponding to this point D that will be shown with the symbol T2 and this T2 is the boiling point of the solution. Now the difference of this T2 and T1, this one, this will be shown with the delta T B that is T2 minus T1 and it is actually the elevation of boiling point or you may call it as ebullioscopy. So this was the graphical explanation which shows the plot between the vapor pressure and the temperature and the two curves are rising which simply means that vapor pressure always increases with temperature whether it is of the pure solvent or it is of the solution but you can notice that here the curve of the solution is at the lower position as compared to the curve AB of the pure solvent why because the vapor pressure of the solution is always lesser as compared to the pure solvent. That's why this CD curve is at lower position as compared to the AB curve. Now, can we calculate the molar mass of the solute using the concept of the elevation of boiling point? So practically, we see that elevation of boiling point is directly proportional to molality of the solution. When the sign of proportionality is changed with the sign of equality, you use a constant and here this constant is called as molar boiling point constant or it may be called as the ebullioscopic constant. And keep in mind that the abelioscopic constant or molar boiling point constant that only depends upon the nature of solvent. So for different solvents the value of the molar boiling point constant is also different. But if we specifically talk about water then for water the value of Kb is 0.52 degrees C per molar which simply shows that whenever you will prepare one molar solution of any non-volatile non-electrolyte solute in the water, the increase in boiling point of water will be 0.52 degree C. So if you will prepare one molar aqueous solution of glucose or one molar aqueous solution of sucrose or one molar aqueous solution of urea, in all these three cases, 0.52 degree C will be the increase in the boiling point of the water. Now what is the boiling point of pure water that is 100 degree C. And when you will prepare one molar aqueous solution of any non-volatile non-electrolyte solute, its boiling point will be 100.52 degrees. There will be an increase of 0.52 degree C in all cases if you are talking about the one molar aqueous solution of any non-volatile non-electrolyte solute whether it is glucose, sucrose, urea or anything else because elevation of boiling point is a colligative property. It is only related to the concentration of the solution. It is only related to the number of particles of the solute. It is not related to the nature or the structure of the solute particles. So in case of water this one is 0.52 degree C per molar. Now we have studied molality that is equal to number of moles of solute divided by weight of solvent in kg. This can also be written as molality is equal to W2 divided by M2. 
W2 is the weight of solute in grams, M2 is the molar mass of the solute. And when you will take the ratio, that will be equal to N, number of moles of the solute, divided by weight of solvent in kilograms. Or you can also write it down that molality is equal to W2 over M2 multiplied by 1000 over W1 but now the W1 is not in kilograms rather it is in grams so this one is the formula of the molality if you will put the value of molality in this equation here what will you get delta Tb is equal to Kb multiplied by W2 in 2000 over M2 multiplied by W1 and if you want to calculate the molar mass of the solute that will come out to be M2 is equal to Kb over delta Tb multiplied by W2 in 2000 over W1. So this one is the formula which is used to find the molar mass of the solute, unknown solutes. In this case, Kb is constant. For a particular solvent, it will be a constant value. W2 is the weight of the solute that can easily be measured by using the weight balance. W1 is the weight of the solvent. This can also be measured easily by using the weight balance. 1000 is constant. So what is the important thing which we need to calculate in order to find M2? The important thing is this delta Tb. This delta Tb is actually the elevation of boiling point. And we have just discussed that this delta Tb is equal to T2 minus T1. It means that if you want to find this delta Tb, you will have to find the boiling point of the solution and boiling point of the solvent. And you know, there is not a very huge difference between T2 and T1. The difference is usually very small. You can see here 100 and 100.52. It means there will be some special method. There should be some special thermometer, which should be used to find this T2 and T1 and the difference between the T2 and T1. And what is that method which is used to find the elevation of boiling point delta Tb? Or you can say T2 and T1. That method is the lands perture method that now we are going to discuss. And in that lands perture method, a special type of thermometer is used, which is the Beckman's thermometer, which is a very sensitive thermometer and it can read up to 0.01 Kelvin. So let us now talk about the lands perture method. So students, now we are going to discuss the lands berger method which is used to find the elevation of the boiling point. This one is a schematic apparatus in front of you. Here is the burner. This one is called as the boiling flask in which always we take the pure solvent. So pure solvent is there. This one is the delivery tube. At the end of this delivery tube, a portion is present which is called as rose head. Now listen very carefully that rose head is the part of a glass tube where the diameter of the glass tube is greater than the other portion of the tube. And this portion is also porous. So you can say that rose head is a part which is porous and it has greater diameter as compared to all other parts of the tube. So here the diameter of the tube increases as compared to the other parts of the tube. Then this one is the thermometer which is called as the Beckman's thermometer and Beckman's thermometer is a very sensitive thermometer which can measure a temperature up to 0.01 Kelvin. Then there is an outer tube this one. There is inner graduated tube this tube that is the inner graduated tube. Graduated mean that there are certain markings on it. Just like you can see that the measuring cylinders, when you see the measuring cylinder, there are markings 10 centimeter cube, 
20 centimeter cube or ml 30 ml 40 ml so these are markings and that cylinder is also the graduated cylinder so graduated simple means that it will be having some markings showing certain measurements so this one is the apparatus here is the hole and this hole is for the escape of the vapors of the boiling solvent so this hole is for the escape of the vapors of the boiling solvent now let us discuss how this works how the beckman's method sorry how the lens version method is used to find the elevation of the boiling point first of all you will take pure solvent in this boiling flask which will be heated by the burner and you will also take same pure solvent in this inner graduated tube here and before taking the pure solvent in this inner graduated tube you will first weigh that pure solvent and the weight of that pure solvent will be noted that will be called as the W1 so here you will take the W1 weight of the pure solvent now you will heat this pure solvent when this pure solvent boils its vapors are produced and these vapors start traveling in this delivery tube finally these vapors through rose head they fall into this pure solvent and when the vapors will fall in the pure solvent what will happen the vapors will again be converted to the liquid form and the conversion of vapors to the liquid form is called as the condensation which is an exothermic process so this exothermic process releases heat which causes this solvent more energetic so the temperature of this solvent increases because of the heat release during the condensation of these vapors and this heat release that will keep on increasing the temperature of the pure solvent and a stage will reach when this pure solvent will start boiling because of the continuous supply of the vapors from this boiling flask to this pure solvent and when there will be continuous supply of the pure solvent vapors to this solvent then the vapors will keep on changing to the liquid so the condensation process will keep on going and that will increase the temperature of this solvent gradually and a stage will come when this solvent will start boiling and when this solvent will start boiling then you will note down its temperature that will be the T1 this temperature is noted down using the Beckman's thermometer and T1 will be the boiling point of the pure solvent now you will disassemble all this apparatus and now you will add the measured quantity of the non-volatile non-electrolyte solute in this pure solvent in this pure solvent you are not going to change this pure solvent in this boiling flask you will just add the solute in this pure solvent which is present in the inner graduated tube so that weight quantity of the solute is added and first of all before adding the solute you are required to measure its mass or determine its mass that will be called as w2 and w2 will be the weight in grams of the non volatile non electrolyte solute which will be added to this pure solvent and then by stirring you will make solution now in this inner graduated tube solution is present before addition of the solute in this inner graduated tube solvent was present but now in this inner graduated tube solution is present you will again assemble all that apparatus together and again this pure solvent will be heated when this pure solvent will boil it will continuously release vapors and these vapors they will move through rose head in this solution so vapors will again be condensed to the liquid and this condensation will be exothermic process that will keep on increasing the temperature of this solution and a stage reaches when this solution also starts boiling and when the solution starts boiling you will determine its boiling point and that will be shown with the T2 now T2 will be the boiling point of the solution and this boiling point again will be determined through Beckman's thermometer when pure solvent and solution both they boil in this inner graduated tube their own vapors are produced and those vapors are then moved through this hole out of the 
tube. So in this way, you will find W1, W2, T1 and T2. And now the difference between T2 and T1. T2 is the boiling point of the solution and T1 is the boiling point of the solvent. And the difference between these two that will be called as delta Tb. And delta Tb will be the elevation of the boiling point or increase in the boiling point because of the addition of the non-volatile and non-electrolyte solute. And then you will apply the formula. Which formula you are going to apply? You are going to apply the formula to calculate the molar mass of solute. Delta Tb is equal to Kb into molality. And what is molality? That is W2 over M2, weight of solute over molar mass of solute multiplied by 1000 divided by weight of solvent. Rearranging this formula you will get M2 is equal to Kb divided by delta Tb W2 multiplied by 1000 over W1. W1 you have measured the weight of the pure solvent. W2 you have measured the weight of the solute which was added in that pure solvent T1 and T2 they will give delta Tb 1000 is a constant and Kb is also you know that is the abelioscopic constant and for a particular solvent it is also a constant quantity so using all these parameters you can determine the again molar mass of the unknown solute and I have already told you that one of the major application of the colligative properties is to find the molar mass of the unknown solutes and all these quantities they are practically measured then practically using the lands Bercher method we find the T2 and T1 and delta Tb and all these values they are added in this formula and you get the molar mass of the unknown solute. This was all about the elevation of the boiling point. Take care. Allah Hafiz.